Who are the kings of Leon? Are they washed up relics of a bygone era? Sellouts too eager to chase short term gain? Or are they simply a band who have evolved, experimented with different styles and found various levels of success along the way? Other YouTubers have covered the Kings of Leon's mainstream era and I'm not here today to talk about Only By The Night, nor am I here to talk about their 2009 appearance at the Reading Festival. Other people have covered that and covered it very, very well. What made me want to make this video was hearing about their new album, Can We Please Have Fun, and the band's apparent desire to reclaim some of the spontaneity that helped create their first few albums. It made me wonder, what does a 2024 Kings of Leon sound like, and how does that stack up to their first album that came out more than 20 years ago? The story goes that the Kings of Leon found huge mainstream success with two big singles, and although that's true, I'm not sure that is the full picture. Even on their first album, the opening track, Red Morning Light, was featured in a Ford advert and appeared in the video game, FIFA 2004. Although their debut album undersold in America, it did very well in the UK and even got rave reviews from critics. Perhaps a perk of growing up in the Nashville area, Caleb and Nathan Follower were actually being shopped around labels as a duo before actually forming the band. Apparently as well, their bass player Jared Followill learnt to play bass guitar purely for this band. It would seem that the band already had a record deal ready to go by the time they recorded their first music. Now why do I point this out? I'm not trying to shame the band or claim that they're industry plants or anything like that. I simply want to make a comparison. You see, last week I made a video talking about Snow Patrol, and they were a band who genuinely had like a decade of complete obscurity before their third album, Final Straw, and its big single, Run, propelled them onto mainstream radio. It's quite impressive with the Kings of Leon that they were able to get some kind of major label support right from the very beginning. But even with these resources behind them, success had to be earned. Youth and Young Manhood did not perform well in America, and it wasn't until their third album, Because of the Times, that Kings of Leon really managed to move the needle in their home country. Of course, by this point, they'd been on tour with U2, and had perhaps something of a musical epiphany. More on that later. Learning about this major label support that the band had right from the beginning, it made me wonder about how influential and important Nashville was to the band's early sound. Digital Spy reprinted a quote apparently told to British tabloid The Sun that the Kings of Leon are hated in Nashville. And if this is true, it could be down simply to them changing their sound and it being this new sound that gained them major mainstream acclaim. But there might be more to it than that. You see, I found a blog named The Nashville Scene and in a 2003 article talking about the band's debut album, they describe the band to be like Athena emerging fully formed from Zeus's head. This itself being a reference to how the band never seemed to play any of the dive bars or local clubs in that area. There's an urban legend that the band apparently locked themselves away in a shed with an ounce of weed and a load of instruments for a month and came out the other end with their debut album. Putting all of this information together, to me it crafts a narrative of a label that or a band even, that were able to get this mainstream major label support and then were allowed to just kind of be left alone for a period of time while they honed their sound and came out with a record ready to be sold and put on the market. If this is accurate, then that is a phenomenal way to begin a band's career and although it did take some time, clearly this strategy did pay off dividends for the band's investors. I do believe that the first two albums, Youth and Young Manhood and A Ha Shake Heartbreak, are a genuine and sincere reflection of where the band were at at the time. However, I also get the impression that Nashville wasn't that integral to the band's sound. After all, they were never a part of the local scene. And being such a young band at the time of being signed, perhaps there was room for further influences to come in and have their effect. With this in mind, therefore, I also feel like Because of the Times and Only by the Night 
are also a sincere reflection of where the band were at musically at the time. Albeit, I will also concede that I imagine there was a certain desire for commercial success. In fact, the band might have even got more of it than they had bargained for. The period immediately after Only By The Night saw the band wrestle with these competing sounds. And vocalist Kayla Followell has said that recording fifth album Come Around Sundown was a difficult process. I think the argument could be made that subsequent Kings of Leon albums have really tried to strike that balance between pursuing this commercial and expansive guitar sound that the band delivered on albums like Only By The Night without alienating those early fans that came on board with the first two albums. What struck me about Can We Please Have Fun is not just the band saying they wanted to recapture the spontaneity of the first albums, but actually I saw an interview with Radio X where Caleb said that right now he felt the most content and the most satisfied in life that he ever has done. Now I'm sure there is more than just the music playing a role here, but part of me does wonder we're now 15 odd years removed from the success of You Somebody and Sex on Fire. And that in itself creates a healthy distance. Perhaps now the band are in a place where they can enjoy their mainstream success on their own terms and no longer feel the need to worry about creating a massive hit. Listening to the singles when they first came out as a casual listener, I wasn't really sure what to make of them. However, researching this video, learning more about their story, and then listening to the album as a whole, I think it does tell us a lot about where Kings of Leon are in 2024. We have the lead single, Mustang, and when we talk about the band's desire for spontaneity, this song, I think, does it. It very much succeeds in that aim. It sounds like a jam, it sounds like something that a band could come up with just thrashing about some instruments in a garage. In fact, I think you could even be a little bit critical of the song, as for about its first minute or so, you could argue you're only really hearing one chord and there's no discernible melody. It is an incredibly simple song, but then the song isn't aiming to be this masterpiece of writing. It's aiming to be a vibe and a good time and to showcase what their intention is with this album. Take a song like Nowhere To Run. In some senses, I think this could have been a southern rock boogie song like off of their first couple of albums. And yet the execution of it is so different. For me, Nowhere To Run really demonstrates just how different to this band are from those early days, and I think sincerely different. This doesn't necessarily have a huge, like, The Edge, U2, arena rock guitar thing going on, but underneath those chords you can hear these lead guitar parts somewhat inspired by the vocals and somewhat in keeping with what the band's later output has sounded like. Yet at the same time, you have Jared's bass lines chugging along, giving it that kind of dancey, upbeat feel. My favourite track on the album is the song Split Screen. The first time I heard it, I thought it was a good song, but hearing it in the context of the album, it was really emotionally resonant. But also, I'm going to dare say that it sounds like it could have come off only by the night. It certainly sounds like it could have come off their previous album, when you see yourself. And in a weird way, although it's not quite as anthemic, it reminds me a little bit of The Bandit. I guess probably in the production and the overall sound of it, more than to do with the chords or the melody. This was mainly an impression off of a first listen through the album, but I really felt like it was the first half of the album that had a lot of character and had a lot of identity. And then for me, the second half of the album, really, after Split Screen, really got into this groove that, to me, honestly, reminded me of the deep cuts off of Only By The Night. And bearing in mind, this is an album where the band are trying to be spontaneous, they're not trying to overthink the songs. And frankly, these songs that come off the split screen I don't necessarily think are hit singles, I don't think they're designed to be hit singles. 
And yet it is telling, at least to me, how similar they sound to deep cuts off of their biggest album. I think, for me at least, it goes to show that this evolution in sound wasn't just a shameless attempt at becoming huge pop stars. This was a sincere evolution in the band's sound, and it is something that has crept in right into their foundation. Kings of Leon have come a long way since their first two albums. Growing up in Nashville did have an impact on their early lives. However, being a part of the music industry right from the beginning meant that they didn't have to slog it out playing dive bars and clubs in the Nashville area. And as such, the Nashville culture perhaps isn't quite as seeped into them as it would be with other Nashville artists. For me, I reckon it was going on tour with U2 and similar arena rock bands that really struck a chord with the Kings of Leon and revolutionised their sound. Even on their newest album, one that is intentionally trying to reclaim the spontaneity of those early records, still we hear, for example, those massive guitar textures. It's simply a fact that this side of the band is a fundamental core part of their modern sound. Indeed, the Kings of Leon may very well have moved on from the southern rock boogie of their early records, but those albums will always exist, and history cannot take them away. Likewise, although the modern sound of the band is different, perhaps even unrecognisable, I believe it is still authentic. And I'd even go as far to say that the Kings of Leon are now in a place where they can enjoy a mainstream level of success on their own terms. That's something that I would want if I ever made it in music, and I'd like to think that's what the fans would like to see too. Even if the music the band are currently putting out doesn't quite align with their own individual tastes. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed my take of the Kings of Leon, maybe drop a like, or if you have your own, stick it in the comments below and I might even reply to it. If you fancy checking out some of my own original music, I'll link it in the end screen here. I have a rock EP named Silent Eyes and Dark, and my most recent release was this intimate acoustic ballad named one and the same. I really hope you'll stick around and check some of it out. In the meantime though, I hope you stay safe, stay well, and maybe I'll see you in another video.